<laughs> Daniel, welcome to Five Week. How are we feeling today? Good, good. Thanks, bro. Awesome. And uh, you train right here in Vegas at Extreme Couture, and you're fighting on Mexican Independence Day right down the road at T-Mobile Arena. It doesn't get much more home game than that for you. How special was it for you when you got the call on, to fight on this card? Uh, you know, it's always uh, a special. And even, yeah, you know, like fighting in, in Mexican Independence Day and here at Vegas with all my team here, like doesn't have to have all that pressure about flying and... You know, I, I just feel that it it gives me like a little advantage over over the other well in this case over 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 Christos because you know being here I know that I'm gonna have the crowd in my side and you know I don't know it it's good being here. <laughs> awesome. You said you mentioned there you're gonna have the crowd advantage on your side, but he's gonna have the experience advantage over you come Saturday night. What's gonna be the key for you to neutralize that factor for you? The hard work. I know. You know, I've been working hard for all my life, and since I arrived here to Vegas and I start training here, I'm doing like four or five sessions a day, like really getting all that experience, training with way more experienced uh, people than me, learning for all the different coaches that I have. So uh, I feel that at this point, it's not about experience, it's about who trains the best, because, you know, uh, you, you see sometimes guys make his debut with 6-0 and or even less fights and they beat guys with way more fights. So I feel that it's not about experience, it's about who have the best game plan and who can um, do his game plan better under pressure and at the moment in the fight, you know. So I feel that experience is not the most important part on the fight. I feel that experience helps more with all this, you know, because when you get the experience, you know how to deal with all the media stuff, the photos, and now I feel that I, I, I'm used to, it's my third UFC fight, so kind of like now having all the cameras and the interviews, and I feel that in that part, the experience is important, but at the time of the fight, it's not that relevant. And uh, you brought up the training there, I mean, training at Extreme Couture. What's that like for you, man, working with all these people at, over at Extreme Couture? Oh, it's been great. Uh, I've been training there the last year and a half, maybe, and I've been growing a lot. All the teammates are, are, are great. They are always will to help. Uh, you know, for this fight camp, I've been training with a lot of bunch of different welterweights that are training extreme, and I always go like, hey, bro, can we train Wednesday at 1? And they are there. And, you know, yeah, everybody is great in there. Uh, my, my head coach, Coach Eric, right now he just got a new champion. So that kind of like fired me up a little bit more this week, you know? Awesome. Y siendo de noche la um, UFC, te voy a preguntar algunas en español. ¿Hay algunas enseñanzas de tus últimas dos peleas en la UFC que te han ayudado con el resultado que quieres este, este fin de semana? Uh, some hey. questions in Spanish. Any, teach, any, any lessons that you might have taken from previous fights that would help you for this Saturday? Sí, sí. Eh, creo que de la que más he aprendido fue de la pelea que perdí. Eh, definitivamente fue como un cambio esa pelea porque más que verlo como una derrota y ponerme a pensar en todo lo malo que eso podía traer siento que junto con mi equipo trabajamos en qué fue lo que falló qué fue lo que hizo falta mejorar y todos esos ajustes se vieron en la segunda pelea que, que tuve en la UFC y que logré ganar igual a un veterano con el mismo número de peleas que tiene Cristos eh, entonces siento que eso fue lo que me ayudó a a crecer, ¿no? Esa primer pelea me ayudó a mejorar en la segunda. Y en la segunda pelea lo que, lo que crecí fue darme cuenta que me, me sirve pelear con público, ¿sabes? Desde que empezó la pandemia y todo eso, tenía mucho tiempo que no peleaba para, para público y menos para un público tan grande como fue en Kansas. Entonces, eh, cuando peleé ahí me di cuenta que me encanta pelear con público. La, la energía de la gente y todo es diferente. Ah, uh, yeah, surely there lessons to be taken, especially from, I mean, if you think about it, you, you always learn from it, but the, the loss. The loss was, was a moment of change for me. Not so much of like, I mean, you lost a fight um, and what happens in your life, but you look at all adjustments and what can be done better? What can I need to do the fine tuning to come back and, and do it? I mean, so after the first fight, we got that into the, into the second fight and, and not, again, a, a veteran, someone that has the same amount of experience in fights and, and experienced guys like Christos. Now, also, it kind of 
dawn on me how much I like to have a crowd because because of the the pandemic. I mean, we've gone through all that, and I kind of forgot how cool it is to, to have that. And to be in Kansas, to see all those people, I just kind of realized all that crowd, like how much I like it, how much I enjoy to have a crowd. Y obviamente toda esa energía va a estar en tu favor este sábado. ¿Tienes algún mensaje para todos los aficionados que van a ver tu pelea este sábado? And obviously all the energy is going to be in your favor on Saturday. A message for all the fans on you for you for they're going to be pulling for you on Saturday. Claro que no se pierdan la pelea, no solo la mía, sino la de todos los demás mexicanos que van a estar peleando. Creo que es una muy buena cartelera y sin duda alguna vamos a dar muy buenas peleas. Um, of course, I, that, you know, watch those fights. It's going to be not just mine, but everybody, every Mexican that's going to be there. It's going to be a great card, and I think we're going to put on a great fight. Y una última más mía. Ya sé que el enfoque está en Cristo este fin de semana, pero cuando ves la división tuya, I mean, muchísimo talento, ¿hay alguna pelea que, que quieres como soñar con algún día pelear con? Um, and one last one for me. I understand your focus is in the Cristo for, the, for this uh, particular weekend, but I mean, going forward in your career, um, you have a lot of talent in your division. Is there like a dream fight or something that you've always, hey, like, I, I, can, I can dream about having this one? En este momento, la verdad, no mucho. Me estoy enfocando en crecer. Es mi tercer pelea en la UFC, tengo 24 años, entonces quiero seguir tomando las peleas que me da la UFC. Me gustaría pelear con Chase Hopper. Hace poquito pedí pelear con él. No se hizo la pelea, ojalá se hiciera. Te digo, no es algo que, que me tenga así como, ay, no, tengo que empezar a hablarle a... En general, creo que ahorita en, en donde estoy parado tengo que entender que tengo que ganar las peleas que me ponga la UFC y después ya puedo empezar a, pues, a crecer, ¿sabes? A irme metiendo en los rankings, ir pues, pidiendo peleas, ir buscando. Pero ahorita creo que solo tengo que enfocarme en ganar peleas y <laughs> ya de ahí para adelante. <laughs> uh, this is not the moment yet for to actually start thinking about fights. I mean, I basically I'm there to face anybody that I need to face and anybody that the UFC puts in front of me, I will go there and face. I mean, they're fighting the UFC, so that's what I'm focused on. Obviously, at one point, I actually talked about Chase Hoover, maybe. Um, I called him out a bit just, just for a fight because I would like to, to happen. It didn't happen. It didn't get me round up or anything of the sort because of the fact that I didn't get the fight. Um, all I have to focus right now is actually to train for the next fight, fight whoever the UFC puts in front of me, and in, in slowly moving forward and, and moving up, you know, getting into the rankings, getting better opponents. But I, right now I have to focus on winning fights. Gracias. Hey, Daniel. Um, Hi, how well. motivating was it to see Sean win the championship on Saturday? Oh, a lot. You know, I remember I was in with my manager and we were seeing the fight and I couldn't believe what I was seeing, you know. The way that Sean won that fight was something something pretty amazing. And, you know, especially since we share head coach, Coach Eric, kind of like, I, I don't know, you know, like, I feel today I, I just work, work out today in the morning with Eric and the energy was different, you know, because having a coach that just made a, his second UFC champ and... You know, having all the trust of him to that, that I'm gonna be there at some point, kind of like, you know, it just gives me something extra that I, I don't know how to explain. <laughs> You're in the gym with Sean, and you you see how good of a teammate he is. So, I guess just like, well, what can you say about Sean? You know, I feel that some some people have like this bad idea of him being a, a gym bully. He's not like he's actually in his weird way he's a good person <laughs> you know like he's in all the sparring sessions that i have with with not with him but that he saw he he has always something to say you know like again in his way but he always has something to say to us to show so he's really always there to share something so you know he's a he's a good training partner i feel that you know you need to earn his respect i feel that if you just walk out in the gym walk in in the gym and just Say like, hey, I'm gonna train. He's just gonna fucking beat you up, you know. But if you win the respect of him and he sh he 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 see you working and really trying to get better, he's gonna help. And you know, yeah, <laughs> that's Sean Strickland. This is going. Uh, you're going into your third fight with Eric in, in your corner. So like, how special is that relationship finally becoming? Because with that fight with Trey, it was still new, right? So like you didn't really feel each other, but now now you've been with him. How special is that relationship? I feel that it's better because now he understands me, you know, because it's not just like you arrive to a new gym and of course for my first fight we got the work done, but as you say, like he didn't knew he didn't knew what to say in the corner or and then in the second fight 
it was the first fight camp that I really do a complete fight camp down in Vegas for three months. And now I do that again. And, you know, it's just like we get closer to each other. We're the point that he, he knows what to say. He, he knows what type of fighter I am. And, you know, that, that helps a lot now. Because as you say, like now I have a team here. And not only with Coach Eric, you know, like I have, I, I work with Coach Dewey Cooper, with Coach Jorge Capetillo, uh, you know, with Coach Chase, Chase Pavin. So uh, I've been adding tools all this time to build up a, a, a team around me to help me become a champion. And I feel that that's important. Who's, who's going to be in the corner on Saturday? Oh, the same one that the last time, uh, Coach Dewey Cooper, Jorge Capetillo, my boxing coach, and Coach Eric. And then finally, who's winning in the main event, Valentina or Alexa? Oh, Alexa, for sure. You know, the stats, like every champion that get the immediate rematch, it's never end up good. So, I don't know. I, I just feel that all the crowd and, and you know, all this hype building up to this fight is going to be in the Alexa side. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. Uh, real quick, uh, what does it mean to fight on Mexican Independence Day? Uh, and this is the first ever that the UFC hosts this kind of event, you know, in, in, uh, in honor of Mexican talent that they have. You know, it's a bunch of different emotions because, first of all, I'm fighting in Mexican Independence Day. It's not the first time that I fight because I actually won my Contender Series contract in the week of in the Mexican Independence Day, and my UFC debut was in the week of Mexican Independence Day. So I've been fighting a lot on that on this date. So it's more about fighting for the first time in the T-Mobile Arena and, you know, uh, have be, being one of the first fighter ever in being in Nacho UFC, I don't know if this is gonna be like something that they are gonna keep doing, but it's cool being the first one. So, <laughs> uh, seeing how they're building this event around Alexa, the custom belt, um, you're obviously a, a, a highly touted prospect, Mexican prospect. Do you see all that, and you see, man, I, I want that in the future. Like, does that motivate you for your career? Of course, of course, and not only the custom belt. You know, like I feel that that's something extra. It's being champion, you know, like what, what wakes me up every morning and drives me to go for the fourth train of the day when I'm all beat up is, is that I want to be champion. I want to become one of the greatest. And, and, you know, like later on in my career, I was like, I don't know, I was shy to, to, to talk about this because I didn't believe it. But now that I've been here for a whole year working and training and getting all this experience, I know that I, I, it's a real possibility, you know, so... Yeah, it's more about become a champion than, you know, the custom belt and all that. Thank you. Thanks. Daniel, hablaste sobre el, el uh, uh. caso en, <laughs> en, en, en inglés, pero algo en, en español, por favor. Coincidentemente, cuando debutaste, cuando has peleado, esto, aquello, uh, este tema de independencia mexicana es como buena suerte para ti o qué onda? Um, you, you said in English, so please in Spanish, this whole thing about you fighting on the week of a Mexican Independence Day, it, it's, it's apparently, it was a good, do you feel like it's a good look for you? How do you feel about always fighting on the week? You know, uh, uh, perdón, no, perdón, perdón. <laughs> perdón, perdón. <laughs> eh, la verdad no creo en la buena suerte. Eh, es algo que he trabajado mucho con mi psicólogo deportivo. Creo que todo mundo tenemos como, como nuestros... ¿Cómo decirlo? Sí, nuestras creencias, supersticiones, pero parte de ser un deportista profesional es pues, no tener eso, ¿sabes? Yo, no sé, día de muertos, día de la independencia, miércoles a las 2 de la tarde, o sea, cuando me digan puedo pelear porque es a lo que me dedico. Entonces, no creo tanto en la fecha, sino pues en el trabajo, ¿no? En lo que vine haciendo, no solamente un campamento, tengo 12 años dedicándome a esto y que me han traído a este momento, entonces… Sí, creo que no, no es tan relevante para mí la fecha o en general. Uh, it, I don't think, I mean, I don't, I don't believe in that stuff. I don't believe in good, in good luck. Uh, I think that when you, when you're a professional athlete, I mean, that's the, the one thing that you, you, everyone has their beliefs, ever ha everyone has their superstitions, but we work so hard for this to happen. So it could be Andy de los Muertos, it could be a Mexican Independence Day, it could be Wednesday at 2 p.m., I'll fight, it doesn't matter. Um, I've worked for this, and it wasn't just for this camp. Uh, I've, I've worked for 12 years for this. I mean, I, this is what I dedicate myself to. This is what I love to do. So uh, it doesn't matter. It's just, you, 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 just, uh, you believe in hard work, and uh, is, I don't think this is a relevant thing for me. Gracias, Daniel. Buena suerte sábado. Gracias.
Woohoo! Thank you guys.